scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. So John, the apostle, is teaching us in chapter 1. He says, in the beginning was the word, the logos of God, the thoughts of God. He says, and the word was with God and the word was God. And so when the discourse about the redemption of man was going on, there was a problem because even the Christ who was seated as the word could not come to the earth without a body. Are we together now? And so a strategy had to be invented to give that word, that spirit, a body so that he would now be a legal inhabitant in the earth. And so he had to search around to look for a woman who would partner with the Holy Spirit in creating a body. He said, a body has thou prepared. A body was prepared to be able to host that spirit. Are we together now? Please follow me. There is a reason why I am sharing this. If you do not understand this, you cannot understand the body of Christ. It's a mystery. One morning, a young virgin, minding her own business, and an angel appears to her and calls her highly favored and then tells her that she's about to be with child without a man. And Mary said, how shall these things be seen that I know not a man? And then the angel, Gabriel, began to explain to her that the Holy Spirit can do something within her that will supplement for the role of a man and she should not be shocked when her stomach begins to protrude long story short this woman is pregnant and then she gives birth to a tiny child it's only men that called him a baby demons were afraid because they they knew what they were seeing it was only a young body but the spirit there belonged to the ancient of days watch this Jesus at age 12 is carrying that body in disguise because he had to be human. You cannot die for men until you taste of what it means to be a man. The Bible says he was in every way tempted like us. And so at age 12, he's in the temple learning about himself under the mentorship of the rabbis. Are we together now? And then for 18 years, we do not hear about Jesus again. He is absent for 18 years. The next time we see him, he's age 30. He's coming to participate in the ministry of one who came in the spirit and the power of Elijah called John. John was not a prophet. John was not a Baptist. Baptism was a strategy to identify the Christ. That was why it stopped when Jesus was identified. When he was being trained in the wilderness, he was given a secret trained in the wilderness, he was given a secret code. Power of Elijah. John was a witness. But it so happened that the anointing he was carrying was that of a prophet. So he had to see. And when John sees Jesus, he says, behold the lamb. He didn't say, behold a young man. He didn't say, behold an adult. 
John was seeing through the eyes of Elijah because every time the move of God is about to come the Bible says whenever God is about to be revealed Elijah must come first it's a spiritual protocol for revival every time the move of God must come the spirit of Elijah must also come first so now here we see Elijah who comes as a foreigner disguised in the body of a young prophet be careful what is hiding in human bodies let me repeat myself be careful the mantles the graces that are hidden in human bodies so Paul said know we no man after the flesh that we discern men the bodies may be young the bodies may be frail but God stores his possibilities in human bodies are we still together John looks at Jesus and says I am not worthy to untie even the latchets of your shoes Jesus replies by saying suffer it to be so so that all scripture would be fulfilled listen Jesus is dipped in water and as soon as he caught, the Bible records that and the heavens opened. Then the father speaks over him and says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And he compels creation to hear him. Are we together now? When Jesus meets with demons, they look at him and they do not see a 33 year old body. They said, the madman in Gadara, you have come to destroy us. Is this not the ancient of days? Hiding and Jesus said, keep quiet. Be silent. That means the ancient of days had to go through that law of territory to carry a body. Please listen quietly. And then it gave him access. Now Jesus is about to return to heaven. And the strange thing is he went with his body. That means there is a problem here. Because it means that his program is under threat. The program needs a body. Remember our discussion. That without a body, it is illegal for a spirit to function. So now, principalities and powers, I'm explaining this scripture, are watching a physical body levitate to heaven. And now they are surprised. What is the mystery behind you returning with your body? being coronated at the right hand of the father which other body will you use he said keep watching just give me 10 more days keep watching there were a group of people in a place called the there were a group of people according to James 2 and verse 26 that when a body does not have a spirit it is dead so there were dead men in that upper room waiting for the spirit of life to come and resurrect them like he did Jesus watch this Jesus is seated at the right hand there is a body now and Satan did not understand that the death of Jesus was to mass produce bodies the goal was not to hide the Christ in a body the goal was to create a system of authorization where the Christ can be reproduced in as many bodies. This was the agenda from beginning. Satan discerned it and entered into Cain to kill because you see, until our dispensation, we did not know that multiplication could happen by reproduction. There was never reproduction until Adam. There was creation. So in Satan's curriculum of understanding, he did not know that a man can meet with a woman and give birth to many children. So when he trapped Adam and Eve, he thought it was over. Then he sees a woman's stomach bulging. Then he sees another child and Satan says, I'm in trouble. It's the reason why he started searching for the career of the seed. And God confused him and said, the seed of the woman. Women don't carry seeds the seed of the woman women don't carry seeds
please sit down. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life will change. Listen, when Jesus went to hell and the legal claims of justice were fulfilled, when he resurrected, he no longer became the only begotten son. He became the first begotten of we, the brethren. Are we together now? So it's no longer he gave his one and only begotten son. It is now that he has brought by the spirit of glory. He's brought many sons into glory. Watch this. So there is a dimension of the revelation of Christ. That is no longer dependent on Jesus, the son, the word. But dependent on the church. This is what your man of God was trying to explain to you. Remember the Bible says in Revelation chapter 11 and verse 15. It says, and the seventh angel sounded the trumpet and there were voices in heaven saying that the kingdoms of this world, the cosmos, has become the kingdom of our God and we, his Christ. So our God and we, his Christ. And together now we shall reign because we are the body and he is the head. When the church was birthed, Christ was never called the body. He now became the head of that body. Are we together now? Yes. So there is a body. And the formation of that body started with a question. This is the question. Who do men say that I am? This is the discourse on the building of the body. And some said you are a liar. Some said you are one of the prophets. He said, okay, you've worked with me, but what is your verdict? Who do you say that I, the son of man, is? And Peter speaking by the spirit. my ecclesia my church the body that i will now use as an extension of my possibilities i will build it the church was built it was not just born it was built built by an intelligence that is formidable i will build it in a way and a manner that the gates of hell shall not be able to prevail against it so now there are bodies. See, let me tell you something. Come, my dear. When the devil tries to afflict this woman, for instance, and stop her from having a child, what is he really fighting? What is barrenness about? Is it really just to show that a woman cannot give birth? No. He is fighting more bodies. Because more bodies means that the program of God can continue. So when a man of God heals a woman from... It's not just a miracle. It's honor to the agenda of God. That you are providing a platform for more bodies. So that the purposes of Christ would be fulfilled. A body has thou prepared for me. Without bodies, the purposes of God cannot come to pass listen there is an understanding we have in the body of christ that is very sincere but it's wrong and it's an understanding that ignores men and bodies in an attempt to exalt christ so sometimes we say it doesn't matter we're not here to see a man we're here to see god and we are right once you say that as touching and describing the sovereignty of christ you are right but when you say that as touching the program of God, you are wrong. Because God is crippled until he finds bodies. Now, bodies are so important that when Moses died, Satan also wanted to quickly use that body. So he can enter it and come back to life as Moses too. A dead body was still useful for Satan. So the Bible says that the temple of God is not our spirit. He says, our body. 
Why is accident dangerous? Because there is a requisite level of health that must be at work in your body for your spirit to be able to stay there and for the spirit of God to be able to stay there. When this body is deteriorated beyond certain limits, both your spirit and the spirit of God will have to exit it. We call it death. Are we together now? So when we minister the life and the power of God, it's an attempt to bring your body to a restored dimension to allow space for the purposes of God to be birthed. A body has thou prepared for me. There is a dimension prepared for me. There is a dimension of the rest itself so an object will create something out of itself the excellency of what it creates is how that object is glorified glorified through its image are we together now the sun cannot glorify itself it is the power of the sun as displayed through the moon that shows you how great the sun is so the father cannot glorify himself so he vests his glory on the son. The excellency of the son is how the father is glorified. The son cannot glorify himself. So he invests his grace upon the church in partnership with the Holy Ghost. The excellency of the church is how the son is glorified. Now the dominion of the church over creation is how the church is glorified. So the church is glorified, the son is glorified, the father is glorified. The father has been fully exalted through the victory of Christ. The contention now is the church in partnership with the Holy Spirit. So Ephesians chapter 3, you will now understand verse 10 to the intent. 3 verse 10 to the intent. That now unto principalities and powers. Help me, we're reading verse 10. 3 verse 10. 3 verse 10. To the intents that now, can you see it now? Unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by this new body he has formed called the church. The manifold wisdom of God. Here's how Paul taught it in Rome. Verse 8 of Romans and verse 18. It says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Then verse 19 says, For the earnest expectation of creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. It says, For creation itself was subject to vanity, corruption, not willingly it begins to trace the corruption the bondage of corruption that came upon creation by reason of the default of adam and says that through the church the creation will now come into that glorious liberty of the sons our territories are waiting for the revelation of the christ through us we are the window we are the mirror of the god that they will know Listen to me, Plato State. The perspective of God that is revealed in this territory will be a reflection that the mirror called the church gives the territory. If people continue to die prematurely, for instance, if die prematurely, for instance, in this theology around your failure to explain away the possibility of God on that wise to mean God cannot move that far so all of the multifaceted dimensions of the Christ the balanced view now in arts there's something called perspective for those of you who did arts perspective means your angle of perception 
based on where you are standing from. Is that true? If I ask you to capture an image or a building from a particular perspective, there are details that I don't expect to be captured because of where you are standing. So plateau state is at the mercy of the balance of the saints to see the fullness of Christ. The dimension that is missing in your territory is the dimension the body has refused to reflect. So if people are spiritual and poor, they are robbing God of an opportunity to see a dimension of him. If people are prosperous and then depraved spiritually, the fullness of Christ continues to cry for expression. And this is what we have come in this convergence to achieve. Let me give you very quickly three or four points that attempts to explain the way that the church as the body of Christ will reflect, reveal, and unveil the Christ. The dominion strategy of the church is not hidden. This is the zenith of the communication of the kingdom. The, the very gospel of the kingdom is an attempt to reveal the all-surpassing power of the Christ as revealed in and through the church. So there is a dimension of glory that can never be accorded the Father until the church reveals Christ in a way and manner that everyone within this territory will know that Jesus is Lord. Number one, is God blessing us? Hmm. The systems that bring glory to the Father. Number one, the first strategy given to the saints by which Christ can be revealed in our lives, our families, and a territory is the ministry of prayer. Write it down. Prayer is the number one strategy given. It's a platform that allows the revelation of the Christ to be seen within a territory. Please say prayer. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. Jesus is still having his mentorship session. He's teaching the believers who would later be apostles of the Lamb. And now his discourse moves to the subject of prayer. And he's about to teach us something very interesting. Are we together? The Bible says in Luke chapter 18 and verse 1 that he spake this parable to the end that men, to the end that men ought always to pray. So prayer is not for prayer warriors. Prayer is not for men of God. Prayer is for men. You are exempted from prayer if you are not a man. But provided you are a man carrying this material body, you are mandated to pray. So the intent of the parable. So the intent of the parable. And the Bible describes this judge. May you never be in a court where you have this kind of judge in Jesus' name. That a judge that does not fear God, nor regard man, you can't bribe him. You can't say you are my relative. And the Spirit of God can almost not speak to him because he doesn't have regard for God. So this is the judge we have to deal with. Sin 2 verse 3. The Bible now tells us that there was a widow. Who is a widow? One whose system of defense from this scripture has been taken away. A woman who is vulnerable, her cover has been taken from her. Now he's teaching on prayer. He wants to show us the power of prayer in revealing the Christ within a territory. And so he's contrasting a man who does not fear God. And a frail widow. And the widow, the Bible says, continue to go to the judge and say, avenge me my adversary. Next verse says, for a while. That means there is a time component to prayer. For a while, that unjust judge would not pay attention to her. 
But then he said within himself, Though I do not fear God, nor regard man. Next verse. He said that... Um, where are we? Please go back to verse 5. Because this woman troubled me. Other versions say because of her importunity, her persistence, her fortitude to remain, she altered the judgment of a man. God could not advise him. Men could not advise him. But prayer still changed his will. This is the power of prayer here. He's teaching us how to pray. That means a territory that cannot pray cannot see God. There are possibilities that cannot be revealed within a territory corporately when men do not pray. He spake a parable encouraging a people that in their quest to see Christ revealed, men will ought always to pray. A family that does not pray will not see the revelation of the Christ. A businessman that does not pray will keep seeing possibilities that will never become his experience. Because the technology of manifestation is that everything is first real in the realm of the spirit and then it is transported through prayer. The realm of the spirit is a compendium of possibilities with no date attached to them. It takes prayer to attach time and create their manifestation. So men can pray. Samaria was under siege until a prophet came and with one decree by this time tomorrow he was not revealing what would have happened anyway he made it happen through the power of decrees are we together now the spirit of prayer men and women you do not know how cheap life can be until you master the art of praying with understanding not crash prayer that is born out of selfishness. Not prayer that is full of wise sayings. Oh God, is this how my life will be? That's not prayer. Are we together now? Yes. The Bible says in James chapter 5, Apostle James is teaching us something on prayer. And then he starts from verse 13. He says, is any man afflicted? So he's talking about affliction. He says, if that man is afflicted, let him pray. Not let him discuss with neighbors and relatives that will not have the power to solve his problem. It's amazing that God is the last person with problem. It's amazing that God. Men ought always to pray. Just are we together? We must pray. Prayer is not for men of God. Prayer is for men. Prayer is for men. We must pray. You know, sometimes believers forget that this is Africa. We have to be honest to admit it. Let me tell you the truth. The, the operation of witchcraft and the operation of powers that be is something that we'll be joking if we try to ignore. It takes prayer to dislodge the powers of the enemy. It takes prayer to select and insist that your portion be manifested. There is nothing that is laid anywhere for you by default. It's prayer that insists on your allocation. Please understand this. The Bible tells us, please go to verse 16. Still teaching on prayer. Confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Then it says the effectual. Now he's telling you the kind of prayer that works. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Are we together now? And then verse 17 now personifies an entity. Now it's amazing how scripture works. Every time God is communicating a thought, he usually will pick an, an individual that personifies that thought. In this case, he's using Elijah. 
that Elijah was a man who was subject to like passions as we are and he prayed earnestly now he's talking about territorial dominion one man prays over the city of Jos plateau state that there be no rain don't you think there were other prayer warriors who prayed against him there had to be other people who say no forget about that nonsense see let me tell you all men are not the same this is a very difficult revelation to get but just try to understand what i'm saying we are equal in christ the same lord is rich unto all but our understanding alongside the election of grace and our personal sacrifices have separated us into cadres of possibilities a man can be talking and saying something and another man's covenant can veto what you are saying because of an agreement you have with God and a vow he has sworn with his name on your behalf. Elijah, Elijah secured a space where God branded his dealings with that man. If you were in Elijah's city, whatever you were praying was nonsense. It was a business between him and God for three and a half years. There were 7,000 other prophets who were being mentored one of them should have been compassionate enough to say, Oh God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, send rain. And God said, Ah, it doesn't work that way. A man who ah, it doesn't work that way. A man who knows how their children don't you think the women would have prayed before resorting to the option of eating their children and yet samaria did not change but one man there are men truly there are men that god honors they will speak over your life and shift your climate like day and night let me speak over someone tonight in the name of jesus the son of the living god i declare that what must shift this night let it shift over your life Please sit down. Prayer. When men can pray, they can shift territories. They can shift climates. There's kidnapping going on in Joss. When I came into this city, that was the first information I got to hear. Now it's everywhere. But I got to hear that this people, they just pick people like chickens. You are moving around and they pick and call an evil amount and tell you bring 100 million bring if you have 100 million spare money will, will you be the way you are and then an evil person who wants to short change there are people who can pray and the earth by itself will look for them the police can only do so much. Do you not know that the stars fought for Deborah? Have you learned how to engage the elements of the supernatural to command victory for the saints? Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven, he says, and canst thou establish their dominion upon the earth thereof? Let me declare that any assassin that comes near your house a day before it, the earth will open and swallow them. Listen, prayer changes things. So, some things remain in our life because you are not serious enough to pray. Not prayer that you are browsing while you are praying. That's not prayer. Not prayer that you are doing this thing and what they do. All these things you do with your phone. That's not prayer. Serious prayer that you off your phone. Off your phone and shut the door. Hezekiah was given an evil report by a genuine prophet. Chapter 38 of Isaiah. He told him, hey, spark up your house, oh king. You will not survive this sickness. He said, you are a true prophet, but go. I know how to do business with God. And he shut the door and said, Lord, remember. Remember. And God sent the prophet and said, I, I don't know what you did with God, but he sent me back to you to say, I've changed my mind. The Bible says, I am the Lord, I change it not. But prayer will compel him to change his mind. Hear me? There is no verdict that is absolute. 
is your prayerlessness that stamps it. Did you hear what I said? There is no verdict. You wake up from a dream and you see your funeral. You wake up from a dream and see a spirit. I killed your father. I killed your mother. You say nonsense. You get up and, and pray a kind of prayer. See, no matter how mad a man is, he doesn't enter fire by mistake. A madman can pick your thing, he can enter the road, but he's not stupid enough to stand in the midst of fire. The Bible says he makes his angels winds and his ministers flames of fire. Whatever has killed your prayer life this night, in the name of Jesus, fresh fire upon your altar. Prayer. You pay a school fees of over 500,000 for your child and he returns with a result second to the last. That's not the issue of flogging. You lock the door. That's an evil report. There were spies that came. I mean, you can't waste my money that way. Lay your hands on that child's head and pray every devil out of that head. You don't like what I'm saying? Please believe what I'm saying. You must pray. Nobody is coming around your business. You've spent money on publicity. You've spent money buying products. You are eating your products by yourself. Don't you know everything is alive? Both the products and your customers are living things. You can connect them through prayer. You will never be the same. You've touched his grace. Your life will change. You will never be the same. You've touched his grace. Your life must change. Please sit down. Let's hurry up. So number one, the first platform that allows the church to reveal Christ is prayer. Number two, are we together? The second dominion system allocated for the revelation of the life and the power of Christ by the church is called productivity. Please write it down. This is very important. Productivity. There is a dimension of the revelation of the life, the power and the grace of the Christ. That is only manifested through the instrument of productivity. When God made man, Adam, he gave him the blessing. And he said it this way, be fruitful. Multiply, he said. Replenish, subdue, have dominion. Productivity is very important. When believers do not make their impact known, and by extension, the impact of Christ known by their level of productivity to the sociological environment, then Christ will not be revealed. More than just praying in tongues in church, more than just falling under the anointing, we must translate the spiritual possibilities we have received to become value systems and products and services that are needed and useful within the context of a civilization. That is the birthing and the revelation of glory. The church will remain a place that looks like a nuisance to society until they can see the blessings of our praying in tongues, the blessings of our word study. Isn't it amazing that we are full of activities from week in up and week out? And it's amazing that those who bring value to the social economy of a territory are seldom Christians. The first manifestation of the Holy Spirit is not as a healer, it's as the spirit of creativity. Bringing light out of darkness, to who are the who, confusion and chaos, and the spirit of God. Hovered round the face of the deep, and God said, light, 
and he saw that it was good the first good thing recorded in scripture came on account of light are we together this is very important the bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the begotten full of grace and truth you only behold what is being manifested we must trust god for grace we must trust god for grace we should see believers the most blessed people not from a carnal standpoint the most productive people in society should be those who are of the church it is proof of the advantage and the value nobody can just come and shut a church because you will show how the people in that church are contributing to the GDP of a territory. We are not just talkatives. No. Hallelujah. The definition of darkness is a territory without us. We culture the moral values. We culture the advancement that you shut the church for 24 hours. A territory should go into disarray. If a territory is still normal when the church is shut, it's proof we are not doing anything. Productivity. There is a dimension of competence and excellence that must come from the church. You have a restaurant as a Christian. That's not, you, you should not be the one who opens by 12 in the afternoon. And closes by 5 in the evening. And believe you will lead the field. It won't work that way. We must be productive. I cast the spirit of laziness. In the name of Jesus. Let me say this respectfully so. And let me admit to you. Mediocrity and low level of productivity. Is a plague that is upon us the middle belt. Now I, I must say this. This is an uncomfortable truth. But it's true. We must trust God for grace. For some reason, it looks like our cultural context has found its way to make mediocrity and laziness comfortable. Consoled by the fact that vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. We must wake up. Otherwise, there will rise another Pharaoh who does not know Joseph. And the sons of the kingdom will be bent into servitude. Are we together? Laziness is one thing that both God and Satan agree that is useless. Whether you serve God or serve Satan, in any case, you cannot be lazy. So we must trust God for grace to wake up. Be productive. Are we together? Don't sell fake things, inferior things. Christians are the ones who cheat people the most. It's wrong. It should not be so. I'm praying tongues and cheat people. You, you give people things that are outdated. And not, no, 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 no. Maintain a standard of quality. The spirit of God came upon Bezalel. And it brought forth creativity. Productivity is very, very powerful. Are we still together? Hallelujah. I found a scripture that I will read for you. And it blessed me so much. First Kings chapter 7. Please let's hurry up so we maximize time. 1 Kings chapter 7. I'll read from verse 13 and 14. Now, look up please. This is the building of Solomon's temple. Let me show you the power of productivity and the power of competence. And King Solomon sent and fetched Hiram out of Tyre. Tyre was the business hub of the then world. Next verse. The Bible says this Hiram was the son of a widow of the tribe of Naphtali. He said, and his father was a man of Tyre, a worker in brass. And he was what? Filled with wisdom and understanding and cunning to work all works in brass. And he came to King Solomon and wrought all his work. The Bible starts by telling us his background. A widow's son. No advantage, but his competence grew him to a point where his domain was the palace. When you serve kings, you will eat with kings. You are not productive until kings call you. 
Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. It says, Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of God is risen upon you. I like to quote it from Amplified. It says, Arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. It says, Rise to a new light. For darkness shall cover the earth, the Bible says, and gross darkness the people. Then it says, But upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise. Verse 3 says, Gentiles. Gentiles will come. There is a level of light that when you have, you don't look for people again. You become so compelling. They will give every excuse to be with you. Gentiles will come to your light and they are kings to the brightness of your rising. I was very blessed when the daughter of the man of God, you know, that little girl, and you can see the kinds of songs that she's singing. Imagine that this lady becomes consistent in the music ministry. By the time she's 20, she would be a global voice. And then people will come and say they are lucky. That's always what we say when we see competent people. Who is this that came from nowhere? Let me tell you, nobody comes out of nowhere. When David is, when David is in the cave of Adullam, you may not see him, but he is there. When David is at the backside killing lions and bears, you may not be there to capture it, but he is there having his track record. There is always a day in every man's life called the season of appearing. Until then you stay. Until then you walk. I'm encouraging some of us who are in ministry. Leave this thing of trying to look for open doors. Doors are not closed. It is your door that is closed. And it was closed by God to keep you in training. When the season comes, the doors open. You are in business, sit down. Promise yourself that you will never stand before your destiny helpers and have them ignore you. You will be too competent to be ignored. If you have to call the attention of men to your competence, it's proof you are not good enough. Your light should be so bright, it should be impossible to be ignored. Number three, can we hurry up? The third platform. Now, please, lend me the next 10 minutes of your attention, please, inside and outside. I want you to listen very, very carefully. I'm taking out time to preach because this is my own state. I'm pouring my heart into this thing because permit my bias. I know there are people following from around, but please, let me just do this thing. I love my state. This is Plateau. I mean, <laughs> praise the Lord. I'm sure somebody will kill chicken and give me for this, this wonderful... I'm joking, I'm joking. The third platform, please, I want you... Anything that distracts you now is a spirit. Just listen to what I'm about to tell you because what I'm about to reveal is a serious issue. The third platform that allows believers to manifest the power, the life of the kingdom and reveal the Christ is called wealth. Write it down. Don't assume you know what I'm talking about. Just write it and listen to me. Wealth. This subject has been persecuted greatly. Either because of ignorance or because of the approach, especially around the Pentecostal and the charismatic circles. There has been the, the communications of wealth from a carnal and a fleshly standpoint that, that is all about just massaging the lust of people. Are we together now? And so at the end of it, you do not have people who are kingdom driven. Their approach is simply a, a trying to create resources just to feed the flesh. Please, this is not what we are talking about here. You will never find access to the corridors of power within any sociological space if you ignore the reality of the abundance of the kingdom. Believers, wake up. The days that we live in we require people who love God and are strategic enough. The subject of wealth is not about prosperity. The subject of wealth is a time redemption strategy. We are mandated to redeem time. And one of the ways we redeem time 
is to sustain the economic wherewithal to stop wasting time. It takes time to know God. It takes time to serve God. It takes time to build the children to love God. And if we spend our time looking for money, we will be there looking for money while the devil looks for our children. We'll be there looking for money while the devil destroys our generation. Respectfully speaking, this is what is happening in the Western world. Satan patiently grew with their children. Knowing that their fathers and their grandfathers would never bow to Baal, Satan left them and went to meet the now presidents of nations while they were 8, 10, 11, and patiently grew with that generation. Now there is a generation that does not serve the God of their fathers. We rebuke this over Joss in the name of Jesus. Look at me. Not being wealthy is wickedness. Just be patient. I will explain to you. It's, it's not just about no car, no house. When you understand the agenda of the kingdom, you understand the world of men, you understand systems of dominion and government, you will know that being poor is a misdeed to the revelation of the Christ. Two scriptures. Number one. Proverbs chapter 22. We'll read verse 2 and then we'll go to verse 7. I believe that in this conference there are financial apostles in the name of Jesus that God is going to be raising. Not people who serve Baal, not people who go around making noise. People who understand the kingdom assignment that is tied to the supplies of the spirit. Proverbs 22 and verse 7. Please read with me. Ready? Read. Want to read? The rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. Very interesting scripture. The Bible never said God made them rich or made them poor. God made men. They separated him, themselves to become rich and poor. Now here's the scary verse. Verse 7. One, two, read. Just. One more time, please. Keep this scripture here. Joss, Nigeria, Africa. This will be the key to our dominion or the key to our slavery. The Bible says it is a law in the world of men that the rich will always rule over the poor and that whoever is on the side of the borrower must become slave to the lender this is a statement that has no bias and no sentiment attached to it that means when satan wants people to become slaves he doesn't make them slaves by making them slaves he makes them slaves by making them borrowers please listen listen this is a very powerful scripture the rich unbeliever will rule over the poor prayer warrior the rich anything will rule over the poor. There are people whose properties have been collected by wicked people and because they do not have the economic stability to defend their cause, they lost things. I made up my mind as a minister of the gospel that I will never raise a people who are just anointed and spiritual. I believe in influence. I believe in the power of economy and supplies in kingdom advance. I'm friends to many people. I don't fight politicians. I don't fight. You touch me, both God and men will deal with you. That's a powerful revelation because in this world, there is no such thing as justice truly. You create your own. Let me, let me not get into trouble. But I want you to believe this and believe it truly. You need God and you need men. Do not fight influence. Don't see wealthy people and just bless them and as everybody is a thief, wicked people. No, there are people who have been blessed through the dignity of kingdom integrity and you will need them. The body of Jesus is hanging on a tree. No prayer warrior could bring it down. It took a man of wealth called Joseph of Arimathea to use his influence with Caesar to bring that body down. Wealth played a role in your salvation. 
the tomb that Jesus was buried was not for government. It was for Joseph of Arimathea. Are you getting what I'm saying now? There are people, there are children today who have no business going to useless schools. But that's what the, the money their parents had could afford. Are we together? You go to a school where the child does not even know what he's learning. They discuss what they are learning with the teacher and the teacher is not sure. And the student is correcting the teacher and they are arguing and that ends the lecture. This is why you see someone become an adult and is unnecessarily dull. It's not that they are dull. I mean, what, that's, that's the product of the background. That you can go to a school where you are sure that they are not only giving your child secular education but the values of the kingdom a school where you have night vigil before resumption part of the requirements is not masters and phds your spiritual stand and the proprietor has the economic wherewithal to outsource spiritual people The name of Jesus is heavy. It takes resources to lift it. Please understand this. There are many men of God today who cannot pray well because of economic vicissitudes. The pastor wants to pray and is aware that they need to buy a new generator. Where will he get five million to get a mechanical generator? And he goes to pray, well intentioned. And he's there for three hours, strolling around. Oh God, you called me. I'm sure of this. You see, you look, at, look at the amount of time that is being wasted in that discussion. Whereas he would have been praying for something more productive. What is wrong with God raising people to say, Pastor, please save yourself this trouble. We will commit ourselves to helping you while you commit yourself to the ministry of the word and prayer. Please don't say it does not matter. There are members who cannot listen to a teaching because their rent is due. And while they are sitting there, the landlord is at the other side and is looking at them. Are we together? And, and we say it does not matter. But what, what, what do you mean it does not matter? Of course it matters. Listen. Hunger will always take Israel to Egypt. The only reason why Israel, God's covenant people, will go into Egypt is hunger. Genesis 42 verse 1 and 2. Don't forget this scripture for as long as you live. Please give it to us very quickly. Genesis chapter 42. Please look up. It's projected. Let's just walk with time. Now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt... There was corn, but the problem is the location, Egypt. He said unto his sons, why do ye look upon one another? Verse 2. He said, behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down tether and buy for us from thence that we may live. Even a prophet would die when there is no corn. A prophet sends his future to the place of bondage. Because he needs corn. There are marriages that should not have happened. Is this search for corn that created those ungodly alliances? There are people like Jonah. They know where God sent them to. But because they need to stay where there is corn. They have gone out of the will of God. There are people today who should not have died. Cheap medical attention just for next to nothing. And they died like chickens. And we say, how can I have that Sharia? Remember, I'm speaking from a standpoint of love. I will never forget the day that our precious Josmaine Market was burned to ashes. As it went down, the economy of many went down. Even till today. There's an army rising up. There's an army 
rise in this city there's an army rising up they will break, break every, every chain, chain break every chain break every chain listen to me i say it by the spirit there will be people who will rise from this city in the spirit and the power of nehemiah and they will repeal they will rebuild the economic destiny and heritage of this city. It is true. Some of them are politicians. Some of them are bankers. Some of them are men of God. But an agency they cannot explain. They will come under the influence of it. And there will be a clarion call. The sons and daughters of the land. Both the ones who are within and afar of. There will be a convergence. And they will come and rebuild the plateau again to become God's own state. Please sit down. I hear the chains only. Hallelujah. We need resources. There are many people here who are in health conditions that have nothing to do with sickness we think about money so much we become sick are we together we have to be very honest about this while we sat down and we were watching the video of the medical outreach it took resources not just desire it took resources to make this happen have you been before someone and said ah yeah i wish i had money you have the heart so satan will not allow the resources enter your hand because he knows we need an apostolic move of financial empowerment men and women with the paradigm of the kingdom not just people carrying money and, and making noise and I'm not, we are not just talking of thieves and crooks. No, we are talking of wealth with the dignity of kingdom integrity. Men and women with financial intelligence and anointing on it who will invade the socioeconomic space of this city and bring this city to its Sabbath. It will happen. And it will happen by the Spirit. A day will come where the sound that was heard, the Bible, the Bible talks about the, the sound of, of languishing and the sound of pain no more being heard within a city. The only shout that will be heard in the plateau is the shout of joy and victory, the shout of the king. A day will come when on a weekday, Will tell your family nobody's going anywhere today we are worshiping the lord you have the resources to pay for your excuse <laughs> hallelujah yes all this unless one of my dear people in the ministry would say that prosperity will reduce your prayer points and increase your prayer life It's amazing. It's amazing. The content of our prayer points. You go to pray for six hours. I agree, but what were you saying? The real prayer was 30 minutes. Out of the six hours. I believe in empowerment. I have seen the value and the benefit. When wealth comes into the hand of one who loves Jesus... And understands the purposes of the kingdom is a weapon of mass destruction in the camp of the enemy. Hallelujah. The Bible says, What shall it profit a man? Look up now. I have to say this to round this up. What shall it profit a man? So he's speaking prophet and he's speaking men. What shall it profit a man if he gains? That's business. Gains the whole world and loses his own soul. Many of you have followed my teachings and you've heard me say it again and again. 
the battle for wealth is the battle for your soul. A realm will come where you don't use money again. You use your soul to pay for things. Now, the economy of Babylon is that you increase as your soul decreases. You can know you are fraternizing with Babylon because the higher your wealth increases, the more your spiritual life goes down. The one thing Satan will not allow is for you to prosper even as your soul prospers. That one is impossible. That the wealthier you are becoming, the more yielded you are. No way. Satan will not allow it. So there will always be a deal. Bow to me and I will give you the wealth of the cosmos. But there is a generation of people who will not bow to Baal. And yet they will access the resources. I hope you know that when I talk of kingdom wealth, I'm not talking of money to eat and money to build a house. If all you have is a car and your small estate, you are not wealthy. You are wealthy only when no amount invested in the kingdom becomes an inconvenience to you. That you are so wealthy that no financial demand becomes an inconvenience to you. We're not talking of some selfish, individualistic, small car, one estate. You are poor. If all you have is money, you are poor. We're talking of a heritage of advancing the cause of the kingdom. I hear the chains only. Can I give us the last one as we pray? Break every chain. Remember Haggai chapter 1 and verse 8. It was a prophecy that prophet Haggai brought. I just felt to just add this. Haggai. It's amazing that those who spoke about this prosperity were prophets, not business people. Haggai 1 verse 8. Go up the mountain. Look up please. He said bring wood. You get wood in the forest, not the mountain. So when he says to go up the mountain and bring wood, he's speaking about a mystery. Enter the systems, the seven mountains of the cosmos, the mind control platforms. Go there and through creativity and value, bring forth the resources and then build my house with it. You don't get wood from the mountain. You get wood from forest. Now he's saying this kind of wood that will be used to build the house of God. Don't go to the forest. Go up the mountain. The same mountain that the Bible says the mountain of the Lord's house will be above it. He's talking of the strata of human activities. Enter the systems. And through your value, exchange it for the resources that you can bring to the house of God. And build him a house that he would be glorified there. Please hate poverty. Not just by shouting it around, but by sitting down to say, Lord, if I have suffered, let my child not go through it. There are people who sat down worrying till they died. There are people who were driving and they did not know when a tree was in front of them. They were thinking and died. Do you not know poverty is a sword? It can kill. There are many books today that have been written and God told the writers that the books will go to the ends of the earth. It has not gone out of their villages because of resources. There are many foundations, some in this place, that would have been given wings if there was the wherewithal, economically speaking. Hmm. Let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. That's what is happening to the plateau from this conference. Let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Number four. 
the last system by which we reveal Christ and we manifest his glory within a territory is called the supernatural. Please pay attention. Just a few minutes and we're done. I gave us four keys by which the church reveals Christ territorially speaking. Number one, I said that it is a ministry of prayer. Number two, productivity. Number three, wealth. The availability of resources that give us the leverage to speak the purposes of God. And then number four, the supernatural. Please, I want you to listen. This is very, very important. Psalm 92, verse 10. Can you pray one minute while you are turning to that scripture? Hmm. But my horn shall thou exalt. A horn is a symbol of authority. It says my horn shall thou exalt. Like the horn of a unicorn. Look at me. The horn of a unicorn never touches the ground. Even when his head is in the ground. The horn is always on top. You shall anoint me in the similitude of a unicorn. And it says I shall be anointed with fresh oil to anoint means to ordain into a possibility the anointing is an ordination it's more than a smearing with oil an ordination an initiation into a realm of spiritual possibilities please look at me christ is only glorified when the works of christ are done works of christ are done If it is the Lord's doing, then it must be marvelous in our eyes. You don't clap for me for walking. It is human to walk. I don't deserve a round of applause for walking because all men walk. But when a man flies, that is a dimension that is not affordable in the economy of men. You must have outsourced an agency and an intelligence that is higher than that which is given to men. There is a dimension of the wisdom, the power, the glory of God that must be revealed in this age, here and now. Principalities and powers brought to their knees an effulgence of the life, the glory of Jesus. The first miracle of Jesus was performed in the city of Cana of Galilee. It was the turning of water to wine. It says this beginning of miracles did Jesus in the presence of his disciples and he manifested his glory. The glory of God is the Greek word doxa. The Hebrew word is kabod. The weightiness of a man. The full essence, the multifaceted dimensions of that man being revealed is called his glory. Please hear me. There is a dimension of the glory and the power of God. More than creativity. More than intelligence. More than value. More than a socioeconomic advantage. We must introduce the spiritual advantage that the believers have. We are not ordinary people. It's not a preacher's note. It's reality. Every territory has forces that be. The Bible lets us know that there are forces that reside within the heavenlies that manipulate the activities of men. Please look at me. Men are only puppets to the spirits that manipulate them. If your destiny helper refuses to come and help you, he's only a puppet to an influence that is strengthened by an altar 
that is created by a covenant there is an advantage that can be outsourced to intelligence that can release your helpers to you please listen to me the realm of the spirit controls this realm find a way of indoctrinating yourself to believe this truth nothing just happens can you say that with me please nothing your car didn't just get missing no your son didn't just turn into an armed robber your daughter didn't just turn into a prostitute your church didn't just pack up no tragedies are programmed please listen to me tragedies are programmed the bible takes us to the book of job now theologically speaking job is a very interesting book the author of job is still a contention and where it really lies as far as the chronological arrangement of scripture is still a debate today it is believed that it's still sandwiched somewhere between genesis 1 and the last chapter but the bible whoever is the writer of job had the privilege to communicate to us from the standpoint of one who was seeing from the realm of the spirit and then the standpoint of one who was a man and the bible starts by telling us that there was a man called job and then he tells us the spiritual credentials of such a man. That he was a man that feared God and eschewed evil. Are we together? Who would offer sacrifices in advance for his children. This man had children and he had his estate. He was the wealthiest man in the east. Then once upon a time, the Bible says a solemn assembly was called in the heavenlies. And Satan was part of that delegation. And he came... And the Lord said, hast thou considered my servant, Job? Satan began to speak. It was from that scripture we see that Satan was testifying. That it's possible that a man can be so fortified, he will come and not be able to access him. Satan is confessing before God that Job was so fortified spiritually. I came, but I could not penetrate him. That scene changes. And the next thing we see is a plethora of catastrophe coming upon a man. In one day, he loses his estates, loses his children. The only thing he had was his health and his wife. Then we see that his health starts deteriorating. The hospital will call it high blood pressure. And they are right based on what the machine and education said. But the realm of the spirit says it is a programming the conclusion of a discourse. Are we together now? What happened that 2019 was such a year of suffering and hardship for me? Maybe it's how Nigeria is. No, sir. It's a programming. The realm of the spirit, Hebrews 11, gives us a mystery in verse 3 that everything that appears is a child. That the mother that holds that pregnancy is called the realm of the spirit. Nothing just appears until it is birthed. What you call creation in this realm is simply transportation from the realm of the spirit to this realm. So when a man is favored, it did not just happen. Realities were manipulated and finished from the realm of the spirit. My Bible says from the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain. Finished. It's amazing how many things have been finished. The messianic prophecy Isaiah 61 says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath ordained or anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek. The Bible says he hath sent me to bind up the broken hearted. Now watch this. To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison. If I look at you and I say you are in prison, will you agree? Won't you ask me to go to the hospital? You are alive. You are free, but you are bound. It's the years of your life that will show you you are bound. You are, the only thing increasing in your life is your age. But nothing else is growing. It's proof that you are bound. The Bible says there is an engracing that can open that door. Are we together? There are families where the women feed the men. 
if you like travel to America you will sit there for 10 years and return back to look like yesterday there are people who have served in our region occupied offices of honor but in old age have been reduced to look like yesterday it's a spirit I hope you are not taking what I'm saying personal because it's true there are people who win but never finish they never finish I was told of a lady who collapsed while they were about to join them the man wanted to faint he had suffered for many years lobbying for approval for his wife this guy is now dressed with his necktie and just to say I do the lady collapses they said it was a health condition well I'm telling you that the realm of the spirit is alive there is a reason why people run away from you when you are in trouble sicknesses come when the money finishes it just goes like that knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish the dominion thereof favor is a spirit it can come and call its kind to you hardship is a spirit it can rest on you and drive every good thing from you hardship as a spirit knows when an alert enters your account and it will not rest till you suffer that's why it looks like everybody's watching you it's just when the arrears comes that your father becomes sick your mother becomes sick your elder brother becomes sick then your car will hit a mopol are you seeing those kinds of things they will just say come out and sit on the ground first you see don't, don't, the bible said thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly don't, don't you read it in your it's in your bible job said thou shalt be delivered from five things yes six things one of it is the scourging tongues of men that men can send words like an arrow and program a climate of disfavor upon a man. Are we together? Very beautiful lady. But the only person who will say you are good looking is a madman. Is that a testimony? This is how these spirits work. To finish your PhD and the only job for you is to manage in a security outfit somewhere. As a gate man. Well, it's better than nothing. Things must change this night. Oh. Please give me a few minutes because God wants to reorder things in our lives. Hallelujah. It looks like every evil looks for you. Every evil looks for you. Trails you like a guided missile until it finds you. When they are looking for an armed robber, they look at your face and say, wait here. You say me, I'm a pastor's child. They say, still wait here. Why must it be my face? You see how these spirits work? Already the embarrassment of being associated with theft, even if they say go, that suspicion is already an indictment on your reputation. Ah, but tonight, someone shout no way. Shout it again, say no way. The Bible says you shall be called Beulah and Hephzibah. A city, the, the fragrance. He said, my, the smell of my son is like a field that the Lord has blessed. The day you are tired of your situation and you stop looking at life just from an academic standpoint, just from a sociological standpoint, the day you approach life from a spiritual standpoint, that's the day your liberty starts. Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven 
you have to sit tonight we have a few minutes but you have to be angry lord why is my life like this i came here at global flames there is a dimension of the christ that is not revealed in and through my life something must change in my life it takes that kind of anger it's a war to them who are at ease in zion hear me every challenge is at the mercy of the anointing that confronts it the anointing is not generic the anointing works like money one thousand can give you breakfast but it cannot give you a car if it's a car you are looking for you will need more of that amount oh, 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 oh. your lifting has come oh, 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 oh. your lifting has come oh, oh, oh. Oh, has come. Oh, oh, oh. Lifting has come. please sit down give me two minutes we are going to pray Please let me have four or five gentlemen. I want to show you something. Come. It's not invitation. Just. <laughs> Please come. Please watch my illustration and never forget it. Some of you stand here. Just stand facing me. Now watch this. Everyone please look at this. I want to show you a scripture that will bless you. The Bible says Paul was teaching. And this is what he said. Paul said and God is able to make all grace everybody say all grace grace is the generic name given to every possibility that can be given to man only routed through the office of the christ it's called grace it's not just limited to its redemptive potential the generic name for every possibility that comes from the christ to man is called grace anointing is grace favor is grace speed is grace are we together so when the bible says all grace that means every possibility i call them possibilities you may call them results every result in this kingdom please look up there is a grace dimension that is responsible for it are we together now speed in this kingdom is governed by a grace when you find the grace that controls speed look up please some of you who know cars very well how many of you know that there are fuses and ICs in cars that control certain things when a light goes down usually you would go and check what fuse or what IC and sometimes you see it burnt you buy a new one and fix and the result shows is corrected now for every physical outcome there is a grace please understand what I teach you so the possibilities that are in men is not just dependent on the love of Christ it's dependent on the graces they have accessed you can know the grace on a man by the results that he commands and graces are in levels and in dimensions you can have a higher level of the same grace for instance the healing grace you can have different levels of the same grace and then you can have dimensions of grace watch this i can have a grace for healing and not have a grace for favor watch this my physical result i will always be whole and healthy and when i pray for you even when you fall even if i pray for prosperity what will come on you is the healing grace because that's what i have just because you fell you will start seeing results in the healing area but not the because i do not have it watch this i can be a healing evangelist and yet even my church members on my birthday they will forget it's not forgetfulness it's the result of absence of that grace that's how the absence of it works that you are not remembered because there is a book of remembrance in the spirit i hope you know that the book of esther teaches us that there is a book of remembrance where the deeds of men are archived and chronicled and that it can be opened and visited 
So whatever makes men forget you is not their brain. Is that the grace to remind them is not on you. Please understand what I'm sharing with you. Was it not an anointing that came upon the wine presser and said, King, I remember this day. Now, I have a grace for healing. And then I come for a conference like this. And although I'm anointed, so we think, but my results show that there is a dimension of Christ that cannot be revealed in me. That means if I study this preacher, I cannot see that God gives men favor. I can't see Christ revealed as the one who brings favor because that dimension is not captured in his experience. And it's dangerous because if this man remains that lopsided, he will build a theology of limitation to mean God cannot flow this way. Are we together? Now watch this. Come. This is the grace for favor. Have you seen? I was always anointed, but another dimension of grace has been added. You will see it in my physical results. My neighbor who has been with me for five years and never gave me a chicken, although he has poultry, will suddenly remember me after service. It's not about chicken. The physical realm is answering to something that is there. Watch this. An uncle who forgot you suddenly says, I don't, something told me, no, something told me. This is the grace. I'm showing you how it works. But even that is not enough. Because there is a grace for influence. When you don't have that grace, you are favored, but you will still be small. There is a grace that lifts you above your equals. Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, even thy God hath anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your equals. Now, I come for a meeting like this. Come now. This is the grace for influence. Watch this. Are you seeing? As a pastor, as you are fishing these graces through hunger and faith, the results are showing in your life. Now, you can sit in pride forever and not carry these graces. The graces are for the taking, but there are rules. Impartation is one of them. And impartation does not flow from colleague to colleague. It answers to honor. Genuine honor. Now watch this. Assuming I want to pray for a politician and I don't have a grace for influence, I can lay my hands on him and say in the name of Jesus, I speak to you. Excel politically. He can fall and roll. Let me tell you the truth in the name of honesty. He didn't get anything. He will only be healthy. If you poison him, it will not work. Because that's the grace I carry. And that's what came on him. But as far as breaking through the spiritual holes of the governmental systems, I don't have the grace for it. But when that grace is here, you can turn your usher into a governor. See, there is a grace that makes men. I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. From whence cometh my help? He said, my help cometh from the Lord, the maker. He doesn't only make the heavens and the earth. He makes men. Follow me and I will make you. When you carry the maker's grace, you don't invite millionaires. You don't invite men of God. You make people. Are we together? Now, you can have all these things and still be foolish. Because, come, the spirit of wisdom. Remember, this is one of the grandest operations of the spirit. Doth not wisdom cry. He said, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. With me are riches, wealth and honor, yea, durable riches and righteousness. Wisdom. This was the spirit that was upon the father when they were founding the earth. The wisdom of God. You find out you are doing very well except that your decisions continue to betray your knowledge of God. And then through impartation. Now notice, hold my hands guys. Notice. Are you seeing how heavy you are becoming in the realm of the spirit? 
This is what it means. The weightiness of a man is the graces upon you that make you heavy. It is because of this weight that the anointing breaks the yoke. There is a yoke, but the weightiness, you are now outsourcing these graces. Please watch this. Now, everyone is exposed to the same situation in life. Your bailout is the graces you are carrying. You can be in Joss and the city will not open for you. But someone will come with this battalion of graces. And the two lift gates of the city open. Not just because you are anointed. You are a carrier of these graces. Listen. This is what defines our possibilities in this kingdom. Every challenge is relative to the graces you carry. And tonight let me tell you. One of the things that must come upon you is a duplication of these graces. Let's go. Watch this. Sir. Saul, the son of Kish. The father's donkey is missing. And now they go searching for the donkey. And after three days, they couldn't find the donkey. You know they would have returned back and written a book and said donkeys cannot be restored. Except that one advised them and said, let us go to a man. There is a man. Every grace comes from God through men to men. Please understand what I share with you. This will be a glorious way of finishing 2019. The fire you receive from this conference, by the end of January 2020, you've recovered 10 years in one. I'm not motivating you, no. One day go better is nonsense. That's why sayings. Time does not change things. Time only reveals. It takes you obtaining the requisite level of intelligence and the grace dimension that your results depend upon. This is what changes your life. Watch this. Let me share with you a little story. We're rounding up. There's a goal. I went to a bank to collect loan. Now, bankers, I love you with all my heart. In the name of Jesus. May you go from glory to glory. Now, watch this. In all fairness, after wasting my time, traveled to Lagos, came back. I won't tell you how much. The man now insulted me and said, you think we just dole out money like that? When he made those statements, I stood and I looked at him. And I knew that it was not his fault because what is on you is what controls what is around you and I shook him I said no problem a few years later I'm in the office of the group general manager of that bank and I'm sitting down and we're talking and he said apostle it's an honor for you to be seated here I said sir let me tell you a little story some years ago I met one of your staff now the bank is closed and I said, this is what he did. And we're laughing. He said, Apostle, you are bigger than that. And I said, is it not because God helped me? There are doors that your yesterday's grace could not open. But watch to see what comes upon you tonight. You will not even have to knock. The Bible says, as Peter was being led by the angel, the doors were being opened on their own. There are graces that can open doors. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Please be patient with me. We're rounding up. Watch this. Seated in this place right now, hearing me inside and outside, are people who love the Lord with all their hearts upon the plateau. But could it be that the explanation to the missing dimensions of the Christ in your life, it may be an absence of a particular dimension of grace. 
or you need a multiplication of the grace you already have because the anointing works like money if they say everybody who has money stand you will stand with your 10,000 Aliko Dangote will stand with what he has the demand placed on the money is what will show the difference are we together? Every challenge is at the mercy of the grace that confronts it. There are graces mandated to trivialize what you call a problem. It will trivialize it and you will not even know. There was an anointing on Reinhard Bonke. People called him an evangelist. Please help that person. Now listen. A man that comes to preach in a territory... And somebody who did not attend the crusade carries his charm to submit it. Is that an evangelist? Graces. The Bible is full of anointings and mantles. Please let me your attention. No grace and no anointing leaves the earth. No. No. Every grace you read in this Bible is still in the earth. It's the dishonor of the saints that has closed them out. You know, years ago, I, I didn't used to operate strongly in the prophetic. But I was watching a video of William Branham. And while I was watching that video, I had an encounter. And light came out from the video. It was from my laptop. And just rested upon my head. And then it started going down in my body for more than 30 minutes. I felt so weak. I was shaking. I just went to sleep. And by the next time I would get up, the dimension of the prophetic in my life changed. Listen. Every challenge. That's why when you go to God in prayer, he will tell you your problem has been solved. He's not lying. What he's saying is scattered across the body of Christ is a grace that your problem has been tied to find it through hunger and honor find it are we together there is a grace this prosperity thing you see that looks like it's a difficult thing is good to be valuable and to be productive but let me submit to you, there are graces that will speak once over your life and tear open your financial heavens in a way that will surprise you. It is true. You must become like a spiritual archaeologist searching with hunger for the graces that make for your efficiency as far as your assignment is concerned. And when God grants through the sacrifice of alignment vessels who have paid the price to convert these graces together then you receive them with hunger this is what is about to happen here i prayed in a meeting and i prayed over a man in a particular church and by the next day he got a contract of 100 billion When the pastor announced it, people didn't clap. Because I probably wouldn't have believed it until I saw the man. And he came to me. He said, I'm already a blessed man. But this is a dimension. Ah, the realm of the spirit. If you can manipulate realities from the realm of the spirit, you will watch life like a chess. This is what is about to change in your life. You come for meetings like this so that a climate be programmed over you. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Listen, truly speaking, I wish I were not the one saying it. There are people called to shift cities and territories. There are graces given to people. When God wants to bless Israel, he finds Jacob and puts that grace on Jacob for the sake of Israel. This is why God brought this solemn assembly. To shift us to dimensions untold.
but we must be discerning and not be like Jacob. 2004, I was in this very city when Red Hat Bunker came. I was in the field. I traveled from Kaduna State and I came and I stood for six hours. I was already a man of God. But I was hungry for a grace that was upon that man. Because you don't receive from a colleague. We are all men of God. You will sit down there and pride will kill you there. I didn't go to the, the field as a man of God. You've heard me humorously saying it. A pregnant woman was standing close to me. And later on she would say, please, I should allow her to lean on me. So at a point I said, madam, I'm not responsible for this child. What is that? I mean, I came with hunger to, to receive. You are now weakening me with your own. I mean, where is your husband? He would have come. I'm joking. I wasn't that harsh. But I, I'm saying I was determined. When her bunker finished preaching a simple message. And you know, for us that God has committed the grace for revelation a bit. We can be very arrogant. Because I mean, say, what are all these simple things? I'm not even hearing. He finished a simple story. Remember, I'm the one who wants to receive. He was drinking water so that he would minister the baptism. And suddenly my eyes were opened. That was the first visionary experience of the person of the Holy Spirit. I saw a bird that was bigger than this auditorium hovering around the entire ground. I thought everyone was seeing it. My hunger had reached the heavens. I knew my destiny needed that kind of grace. That woman in green, I'm seeing an angel pour something like oil on her. That mama, that's what I'm seeing now as I'm just talking. I'm seeing that woman. In the name of Jesus, the woman is going to begin to have strange dreams. It's a prophetic grace that God is birthing over her. I release that grace upon you right now. Help her please. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the one at her back, I'm seeing oil being poured at a lady at her back. Please follow me. We're about to pray. When I saw that visionary encounter, then the spirit of the Lord took me, sir, to Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. There was darkness and the spirit of God hovered around the face of the deep. And the spirit of God spoke to me that the union of the spoken word and the movement of the spirit is what bends the miraculous. I saw it. When I came back from that vision, I was back in the stage and I rejoiced. I said, I've gotten it. You know, Elijah said, if you can, Elijah said, if you can see me, was he not looking at him? There is a seeing that you look with hunger. Hallelujah. Every time I read God's generals, it was as if I was reading about my colleagues, my families. I started searching for people on earth that were carrying the graces and the mantles of the generals. And I bless God I've been able to meet a few of them. And one of them that I met told me, I said, tell me what Smith Wigglesworth said before he died. And he said, Smith Wigglesworth told Lester Sumrall, he said, do not die with this anointing. He said, when you are old, find young men because there is a revival coming. He said, find young men. Mantles are falling here tonight. Anointings are falling here tonight. Graces are falling here tonight. For the kings to be born, for revival to return. For the kings to be born, for revival to return, yeah. Hali, hali, yo. Hali, yo. Hali, yo. Hali, hali, yo. Oh, oh, oh. And then, when I received that impartation, watch this. The hallmark of my encounters was when my hunger had reached the heavens. Then the Lord Jesus appears to me. When the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me, I was like a dead man on the ground. 
the, do you know hmm, let me tell you the truth well, many people say they have seen Jesus I don't have a right to contend with them but if it's the Jesus I see that you see it will take more than one year for you to recover it has nothing to do with whether you have faith or not how he entered my room I cannot tell the splendor the majesty he was not on the ground whether he was in the air I do not know I was like a speck of dust he was not talking to me but he was speaking to me that was when I learned in the realm of the spirit that you do not have to talk to speak light is a language the light he stretched his hands towards me watch this and a light left him you've heard me say how I did not die it's a mystery that only him can explain when that encounter finished he left a straight line came from Genesis to Revelation I started understanding mysteries I never studied what is the meaning of this what is happening to me in one of the encounters that I would have in the later years the Lord looked at me and he said my son from today I give you my presence as a gift and then I saw this angel standing close to me and I said who is this and he said he will walk with you and follow you in all your meetings he said he is called the angel of the Lord's presence we are not much except for the spiritual possibilities that we carry hallelujah and the last instruction the Lord would give me please listen he said every meeting I will allow you go to in that meeting there must be a few people the light that came from me to you you must allow to come to them and I have not failed help them please this listen please take it high for me David. I want you to be sensitive this is what is responsible for some of these manifestations you see it's an equipping of the spirit it's a grace for a generation it's not for a church it's not for a city tonight by the love and the relationship of your dear man of God the Lord has granted me the grace to come join in my faith with all the servants of God here please listen to me if you can humble yourself and look to Jesus in a man not just a man let me tell you you will receive something tonight that will turn your life around in a way that will shock you because there are people in ministry the deficiency is these graces you see the apostolic grace is not for church the apostolic grace is for spiritual governance it is our assignment under god to define the coordinates of the program of god as given to a dispensation and so our assignment is to come into a territory and through the sacrifice of alignment find out the precepts of the spirit allocated for a generation and the graces that should come with those thoughts and to supply them if deficient so when he sends us he sends us with all the backing and the equipping that can make that can build that can release this is my final session with us we are going to pray and please I plead that you spare me a few minutes let something from heaven that will be worth your sacrifice in this conference come upon your life and turn you into another man there are men and women of God here you must carry graces that will speak the purposes of God upon the plateau there are business people here you must carry anointings in one minute wherever you are please lift up a cry before the God of heaven Lord is my season I come with my heart open if someone pray
Someone is praying for a new dimension, oh God. My ministry must change. Outside, make sure you are praying. My family must change. My political career must change. God has spoken to you about your political destiny. It's more than joining a party. It's more than having political allies. There is a grace that keeps men in their destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We minister as privileged stewards of the mystery. We minister as those who have been granted grace and mercy from God. I see a lot of angels in this place. I'm seeing written in the air restoration that anointing is coming on people now please bring them out right now there is a grace people who have lost things lost time please help us let's be very fast I declare let that grace right now the grace that restores and I will restore to you take that grace now Please bring them out very quickly. I'm prophesying restoration right now. Restoration. You've lost things. Help that lady, please. Whether you are an usher or not, please help whoever is close to you so they don't injure themselves. I minister restoration by the Spirit of God that here at this fire conference, you will know that you encountered the grace that restores. I prophesy restoration opportunities restoration relationships I want to release the grace for speed there is a real grace for speed please hear me as I pray this grace the hand of God will come upon people and they will start running physically. I want you to help them so they don't injure themselves. Right now I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood. Joss, Plateau State, hear me. I declare in the name of Jesus. Receive the grace for speed. Take that grace now. Speed in your destiny. Speed in ministry. I declare speed. Speed. 10 years in one year 10 years in one year by the spirit of the living God have you heard this proverb that in one day a nation is born he said but as soon as Zion travails she shall put forth a son I prophesy speed speed in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. Now, please look up. Let me have your attention. The Lord is showing me an eagle. And every time I see an eagle, it's a representation of the prophetic grace. There are people here who are going to drink of this wine. Many men of God, many women of God, 
right now in the name of Jesus at the count of three may the eye of the eagle the eye that sees and the ear that hears let it rest upon you one two three take that grace I activate the prophetic I activate the prophetic I activate the prophetic this is that let there be a rain of the eyes that see Hello, Madonna. Hello, Hello, Madonna. Hello, Hello, Madonna. The Lord is showing me a lot of women ministries that will be better from this conference and there are people that anointing is coming on right now where are the daughters of Deborah I stretch my hands from the left to the right I declare by the Spirit of God let the mantle that will bear those ministries be released upon you now in the name of Jesus be released upon you now in the name of Jesus be released upon you now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There is a grace that establishes a man fast. I need to pray that grace because this grace is deficient in the middle belt that the grace that establishes people fast is not there we must trust God for the grace in the name that is above all names I decree and declare standing in partnership with all the graces here I declare over plateau state over just the grace that stabilizes a man quick take that grace now receive that grace now if you are trusting God for healing any part of your body our time is gone I may not be able to prophesy and speak to people tomorrow is a night of prophecy so you can come with your heart open and the man of God is going to be speaking God's counsel but you are trusting God for healing I want you to lay your hands anywhere you are trusting God for now we may not have the time to take testimonies I'm sure that it can be done in later sessions but I want to pray for you just right where you are place your hand there place your hand right where you are Now, please listen. The healing anointing is strong. There are two ladies that are going to shout a very loud shout to the hearing of everybody. Hallelujah. Okay. A very loud shout. That's what the Spirit of God is telling me. I'm ready to pray now. Please, I'd like you to agree with me and say amen. In the name of Jesus. Mm. My God, the healing anointing is touching people. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The power of God is touching this woman. I'm seeing an anointing right now as I'm speaking. Something is coming out of your stomach, mama. Let it go now. Help the woman. I command every devil of infirmity plaguing anyone and any family here be gone now in Jesus' name. Be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. Be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Now I decree and declare be healed in the name of Jesus from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet be healed in the name of Jesus I command blind eyes to be opened now in the name of Jesus I command deaf ears to be opened now in the name of Jesus every blood condition I bring it under judgment now the Lord is healing peptic ulcer. I declare be healed now in Jesus name. I'm seeing a severe case of migraine headache. In the name of Jesus be healed right now. The Lord is showing me a number of ladies. With all kinds of malignant growths. Around your abdominal region. The power of God is coming upon you now. And the Lord is bringing you healing. Please help them. The power of God is coming upon you now. I command that devil to come out of your body now. S-S-A-S. We change your genotype now. Please help them. We change your genotype now. heaviness in your body you feel as if you are carrying several people on you I declare be healed right now any spirit associated with your condition I cast that spirit out of you now in the name of Jesus Christ glaucoma be healed now in the name of Jesus peptic ulcer be healed now in the name of Jesus. Cancer. Be healed now in the name of Jesus. Sugar diabetes. Be healed now in the name of Jesus. High blood pressure. Be healed now in the name of Jesus. Now, whether or not I mention your condition. In the name of Jesus Christ be healed now. Be healed completely. Every door that has been closed over you, I stand in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God, and I speak to that door. Ephata, be open now. Be open now. Doors of employment. Be open now. Doors of ministry. Be open now. Doors of fruitfulness. Be open now. If there is any family here. Where the spirit of death is upon them. That as you are entering 2020. It will be survived by. I stand by the God of heaven. And I cancel the spirit of death now. I pray for every politician here and everyone who is in government the grace to legislate in righteousness and truth may that grace rest upon all our politicians in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for every student here the grace to excel and the grace to finish strong receive that grace right now all those who have written jam 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 and doors refuse to open we open that door here now in the name of jesus christ and all those in final year in any institution i release upon you the finishers anointing grace to finish with honor can i pray over our finances Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. He says, believe in his prophet, so shall you prosper. I stand by the God of heaven, the one who is the helper of all men. And I speak over your finances. Between now and March 2020, I speak by the God of heaven. And as touching the grace that he has given, 
I shift you into a fearful dimension of wealth a dimension of financial grace receive it in the name of Jesus let me pray over your spiritual life we're rounding up if all you have is money and influence and your spiritual life goes down you are failed woefully I need to pray there are altars that need fire to come back again that your prayer life has gone down you can't remember the last time you spent time with God. No prayer. I pray for you. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Nora. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. The spirit of prayer and intercession in the name that is above all names I'm praying now may that grace rest upon you now fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar every complacency in the area of prayer let it leave you now in the name of Jesus I pray for your word study life the appetite for the word of God the grace to sit down and learn at his feet may that grace come upon you now I pray for every family represented here whether your loved ones are here or not may the angel of the Lord's presence go down to every home and begin to correct anomalies in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for every church and every man of God that has come to stand by God's servant and support this program. In the name of Jesus, may your assembly step into another dimension of grace. Let me pray for the workers in this church. The Bible says a worker is deserving of his wages. I pray for everyone who serves the purposes of God within this church. In the name of Jesus, go from glory to glory. Go from grace to grace. In the name of Jesus. Now let's speak over Plateau State. Plateau, hear the word of the Lord. We are speaking to the soul of the city. I command the two lift gates of this city to be closed over terrorism. From the north to the south the east and the west I command the earth and the elements of the supernatural within this city to fight any terrorists that will want to disrupt peace in the name of Jesus Christ let the spirit that makes for bloodshed the spirit that makes for death and the sound of languishing as it was in Rama I declare that that spirit is banished from this city I declare wisdom to the government of this state right from the governor to his cabinet to everyone who is a member of parliament the wisdom to decree with righteousness and justice let it be given to you in the name of Jesus Christ I declare that the sound of poverty the sound of mediocrity the sound of wasted destinies will no longer be heard in the plateau in the name of Jesus Amen. and finally for everyone who is part of this great conference inside outside and those following online I stand in agreement with the grace upon your man of God and all the graces that are here and I decree and declare go forward Amen. advance Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Amen, amen and Amen can you spare me two minutes to make an altar call? I would not want to go and sit down without making an altar call. There's no point wasting time. There are people here who are saying, Apostle, if you will give me an opportunity, I want to make my ways right with Jesus. 
There are others who have never made a genuine commitment. Others are saying, I love Jesus, but here and there, I've just found my life go haywire. Please, you don't have to match those who are under the anointing. But whether you are outside or inside, I'm going to count five. I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here. Let's celebrate them as they come. One. Don't wait for anyone to be the first. You be the first. Come and stand very proudly. Are there people coming? Global Flames, is this how you celebrate salvation? Two. If you're coming, I want you to run and stand. Run to Jesus. Win that war. Three. Please allow those who are coming from outside. Quickly, come and stand genuinely and sincerely. Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. Join them. Four. Quickly, please. Keep clapping. Let's encourage them. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. We're withholding nothing. Beholding nothing. Praise the Lord. Do we have everyone here already? Those coming from outside, please make way for them so they arrive here on time. I salute every one of you. Some of you are crying. There's no point being ashamed of your tears. I'd like you to lift your right hand high above your head. And I'd like you to say this after me. You're not reciting a poem. Let it be from the depth of your heart in spirit and truth. Say after me, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. I believe in you. That you are the son of God. Tonight, I have heard your word. And I want you to be revealed in and through me. Therefore, I declare that Jesus is Lord, is Savior, and King over my life. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.